So we received a lot of questions at the back of the room, so thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Sheikh, for that very thought-provoking uh, lecture, which I'll have to definitely think about when I go home, because it's not enough to just hear it, but something that uh, we will need to ponder about inshallah. more, inshallah. So By the way, before yeah. you go, this is Hose England website. If you go to Multimedia Archive, then you have list of lectures and for example first is islamic ethics different courses and can you scroll down okay then quranic studies two courses audio video then aqaid so you have different books and aqaid different levels then you have jurisprudential rules your princess and at the end please go down You have also philosophy, so logic and philosophy. So introduction to Islamic philosophy, 33 lectures, and Bedaratul Ikhna, which is intermediate, going on. So if someone is trying to have more systematic understanding of Aqaid, theology, philosophy, so Alhamdulillah lectures are available. And also there is a link if you want to have bullet points of each lecture, they are all Alhamdulillah available. Yes. What's the purpose of having God? Of, what's the purpose of having God within us? This this is a fact. This is not something which is made in order to think of a purpose. But maybe you can say, what's the benefit of this? The benefit of having God so close to us is that for our perfection, we don't need to do wonders, we don't need to travel to another planet. It's just a matter of, as I explained, it's a matter of recognition, a matter of acknowledgement, a matter of opening yourself to God. The Quran says, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّ But just open yourself, let God's light shine to your heart. The journey is not that difficult. You know, we think it's very, very difficult, you know, to become a good person. It's not very, very difficult. It's very easy, but we make it complicated because we don't want to wholeheartedly, you know, get into this. Otherwise, in one day, you can make a decision and you can get to God. And you can t uh, take 40, 50, 60 years and even don't get to that stage. So it's a matter of we opening ourselves to God, welcoming God, being humble and empty from our ego. Yes. If God is within us, then is that not saying uh, we are made from God? I and mean, if He is within us but separate, then are we not made from God in one aspect? I think we explained this. He's not within us in the sense that we, are we God? Are we made from God? Can we say no, he's, we are not made of God in the sense that He's a material, but we are made by God, not from God. God has no part and nothing is going to come out of Him. It's not that when He creates something, He takes part of Him and throws it away. You talk about Pedro and finding God inside ourselves. Can you say more spiritually and practically in our everyday lives how we find him? I think we you talked about this, yes. Okay. Um, Maybe this question was before. before yeah, that's what yes. Um, if there are three categories, known, 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 unknown, 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 God sits within unknown, unknown. Accepting God is limiting us to any other possibility within the unknown, unknown. And if we are certain he exists, we have confined him in, in mind. God is not totally unknown. God is known actually. But it's a matter of how much you know him. Do aliens or other species exist? Do aliens or other species exist? 
we don't know about all different types of creatures of God. But philosophically, we know that if there is any chance for creation, God would feel that and would fulfill it. So, sometimes people ask, why Allah has created so many things and, you know, diverse, you know, for example. The answer is that when from the top of the hierarchy of existence, existence comes down, it has to feel all different levels. You know, if, like for example, if you have a waterfall, waterfall when comes down, go through all different heights. It doesn't jump. There is no tafre. There is no jump in grace of God. So God feels from the top to the bottom everything possible. Any beauty, no matter it's 100 degree, 99 degree, every beauty will be fully uh, filled. Any I think, of course, design is not something that people can easily deny. If they deny, maybe what Sheikh Fatim wanted to say was, if they deny, you cannot force them to accept, but it's not something that rational people can easily deny, you know? For example, if someone denies that we are here, what can we do? But it's not something that we, people accept from him, you know? He says, no, I don't want to accept. So, when it comes to evolution, first of all, we have no problem with evolution. Why? Because we have actually in our hadith that before this Adam, there were many other Adams. So we don't need to say this Adam is the first human being ever made by God. Actually, hadith says there were other human beings before this Adam. This is one point. Second point is that Ayatollah Mutahari says, actually evolution can help us better appreciate design. Because if, suppose, you have a product line that can never evolve, and another one that can evolve and improve itself, which one is showing more design? This second one is better. If God has created the world in the way that they can evolve, it doesn't contradict that this world is created. So, we are very comfortable about the issue of evolution. But, whether evolution is a fact, no, it's not a fact. Whether even we accept evolution, it means that everything must be a result of evolution. Again, no. For example, what is wrong if we say that there were human beings which were a result of evolution, but also Allah created one human being directly? What's the problem? There's no problem. So, we have no problem with the theory of evolution. It doesn't pose any threat or challenge to our ideas because we are not, in our text, put in a condition that if we accept evolution, you know, we have to reject our scripture. No, we are very flexible about this issue. But, scientifically, we think it is not proved. And also, even if it is proved, it doesn't mean that everything is a result of evolution. Maybe certain things evolved, maybe certain things didn't evolve, maybe certain things were created directly. There are lots of other possibilities. Yeah. Uh, 
the soul would not come back to this physical world, to the earth, but the soul would continue her life in other realms. Barzakh, then day of judgment, we have hell and heaven, but it's not coming back to this world after day of judgment. Yes, we have Raja, but Raja is before Qiyamah. So from Barzakh, some souls come back, but after Qiyamah, no return to this world because this physical world will not be like this. This will be transformed into a new type of world. So the continuity of the life is different. And this is why uh, in philosophy we say soul in beginning can be connected to the physical world, especially according to Mullah Sadrat, Jismaniyatul Hudud. In the beginning, it's process of substantial motion of embryo. At one point, it becomes soil. soul. But Rohaniyatul Baqa. As soon as soul is created, it's immaterial. It can be transformation that happens in Imberio's body. Of course, Ibn Sina had another idea, but according to Mullah Sadda, it's the development of Imberio that leads to creation of the soul. But as soon as created, all philosophers, whether Masha'in or transcendent philosophers, in Islam, they all say it's immaterial. So soul doesn't really belong to this world. It just interacts with the physical world. Our soul is not a physical object like a chair or you know, uh, stone. Or, our soul is immaterial in essence, but in action interacts with the physical world. Yeah, I think one last question. Sure. What is the difference between God and Allah? Which is the correct term? It's a matter of language. If you read Bible in Arabic, it doesn't say God, it says Allah. Christians in Middle East, they call God Allah. In English, they call God. Of course, maybe these terms, some of them are richer than the other. But what is important is that now they have become proper nouns for the same reality. So we should not be very sensitive about this issue. We can say Allah, we can say God. What is important is to improve your understanding, not just to stay and fight over these terms. Whether we say Allah, we say Rahman, we say Allah, they refer to the same person, the same reality. Any final questions, Joe? Alaikum salam wa Thank you. 
So the first question was about <clears throat> the chance of knowing God and rela relation with God, whether it is given equally to everyone or not. Like, for example, you may have children who are dying because of a starvation or war, and they don't get have chance of developing. The answer is that, yes, it's a matter of fact that in this world, what other people do have impact on us and what we do has impact on other people. And therefore, we create for ourselves different spaces for growth. It's not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was only Allah, everyone was in a perfect situation. But the grace of Allah comes to this world through the natural channels of distribution of this grace that we are also participating in shaping of that system. So, it's not that everyone receives equally. But what is important is what you do with what you receive. It's not that much important how much you receive. What you do with what you receive. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما أعطاها. Allah would not ask you about what you have not been given, what other people are given. No, Allah asks you, what have you done with this? He has given you one pound or one million pound. The question is not how much you have now. The question is what did you do with one pound or one million pound? Not that. Let me know how much you have. Maybe the person who had been given one pound, made it ten pounds. The one who got one million pound still keeps one million pound. So which one is better? The one who made one pound, ten pounds. So any person who is in a sense, uh, age of maturity and responsibility, just it's important that they do better with what they have. And I have this idea that on the day of judgment, Allah will not compare us with each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares you with your own potentials. So he would tell you, this is what you could have become if you appreciated your own potentials. Okay? So he would not judge me based on what other people have done, would not compare me with anyone else. He just compares me with my own potential. When it comes to children who have not yet become mature, in Islam we believe that children are all innocent. And even children may go to heaven or be given permission to go to heaven and the hadith says they will wait in the gate of the heaven and they say, you know, our fathers and mothers should join us. You know, the child who is miscarried, and he says that would not go to heaven. Says hatta yadkhula abawai. So this child is not deprived of going to heaven. Actually, intercedes for father and mother because child is innocent. We believe in fitrah. We don't believe that children are in limbo or they cannot go to heaven. Children are innocent and they can go to. So it's much easier if a child, <laughs> you know, is not tested. But what is important? We should always try to improve conditions of life for ourselves and other people. We should not be reactionary, we should not be passive, but actualize and utilize whatever is available and improve, even if you can improve a little bit, improve it. And the second thing is correct. We believe that uh, There was, you know, sometimes when they want to say a story for children. You know, in Farsi we say There was one and no one else. There was only God and no one else. So, some people think it means that there was a time that God was alone, but no longer he is alone. No, this is not the idea. There was a time that was only God and nothing else was with him. And still, 
Nothing is with him. Because there is nothing at his level. We cannot give company to God. God can give company to us, but we cannot give company to God. This is why in the Quran, we never say, someone is ma'allah. We can never say Arabic, you know, especially Quranic Arabic is very precise. You can never say something is ma'allah. Some, in English, we translate it is with God, you know. But in Arabic, if you say ma'allah, this is shirk. La tad'u ma'allah ahada. Never call anything to be with God. We can be in Allah. If you are muqarrab, you are in Allah. You are lad Allah, but not ma'allah. So therefore, he is still in that level alone. Nothing can be companion of God in that level. But he is with all of us. But you are not ma'aku. Thank you. Very good question. Mashallah. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you for your patience and attention and good questions. And may Allah, inshallah, bless you, inshallah, with more understanding of himself, inshallah. Yes, uh, thank you to all of you that attended, and thank you to Dr. Sheikh for accepting our request and, you know, blessing us with the knowledge. And our pleasure. Inshallah, Allah allows us to think about what you said. Yes, sir. And inshallah, really think about ourselves and our Creator. Yes, and move forward in the spiritual journey. It's Salah time in a few minutes. We'll have Jama'at Salah as well. Uh, just a loud salawat for both the Sheikhs, and thank you very much from Pace. Have a safe journey home. And inshallah, we can do something else in the future.